Great. Well, hi everyone. Uh, so this is we're going to do a deep dive, right, right. into uh, blood pressure readings. Okay. And um, so, if you don't mind, Simon, I'll get you to do the the procedure uh -huh. uh, in both palpation and auscultation. Yep. And if you don't mind, I'll ask some questions about why about you're it? doing what you're doing. Yep. Sounds yeah, great. Sounds okay. Good. So we'll start with um, just setting yourself up for a blood pressure is the most important part. If you set yourself up well, it's much harder to fail. You can still fail, but it's much harder. So don't just sort of dive in and jump over the patient. What I like to do is start with Ben. May I take your blood pressure? Yes. Excellent. So I've got consent. So now I take his arm and I normally just rest it right there on my knee. And I've got a good strong pulse. So I know that I can take a blood pressure on this side. If I was feeling there and there's no pulse, um, maybe I get halfway through it if I haven't done this step before, before I go, I can't find your blood pressure. And Ben tells me, well, of course not. I don't have an artery on that side because, you know, it, now it's in my heart for me. So always right. good to check. Okay. Okay. Um, and next, you might maybe try on the other I side. I would if ideally, yeah. if you don't have an artery on that side, there's not much I can do. Or at least an artery that I can palpate. Mm. Um, so the next thing to consider, you'll see here, it's got an artery marker. Now, you don't have to have that perfect, um, as in you can be a little bit either side. The point of that is that it's in the middle of this rubber bladder, which only runs from here to here. Um, you want it in the middle because you want that to be crushing the arm properly. So if I've got it on the side and I've got um, no rubber bladder on this bit, I might not be crushing the arm. I might be crushing the arm like that mm. when I want to actually tourniquet that artery. So you just have to be within the ballpark, um, close as you can. The second thing to consider, and I'll twist it around so you can see it, you see here I've got written a range, and then there's a white line that runs down that side called the index. So I wanna make sure that I'm within that range. If Ben's arms were too small, we'd see that it doesn't fall within the range. Okay. Because it's too small, what that means is that bladder has folded over on itself within the cuff and that's bad because it means it's not going to blow up correctly and we're not tourniqueting. Mm. If we're right outside the range, so we're just not going to get enough coverage of the arm. So make sure you've got your cuff size correct and I'll pop that one back on. Make sure you're all good. Now I'm also making sure that I'm covering the arm properly so I've got, um, it's not too wide or too too thin for the arm and I want it just above the bend in the elbow there so I can access the cube fossa. Take your sphygmo and that fits on that little bit there or you might have an integrated model where it's got the sphygmo and the the cuff it sort of looks like that okay. um, but in this one just like that and just fold that down so you can actually see what's happening. So I can see I've got the cuff on it's correctly sized it's correct, correctly placed and I'm zeroed there. The way I like to do my blood pressures again just start with finding that pulse. Once you've got the pulse, okay, I've got it. So it's going pulse, pulse, pulse. Now I know you're gonna have a blood pressure of at least 60. So I pump up normally to about 60, or around 40, 50, 60, feeling the pulse. And now from here, as I keep going up, once I go beyond the systolic blood pressure, I expect that pulse to disappear. So normally what I do is I feel for the pulse and I go pulse, pump, pulse, pump, pulse, pump. And now I can't feel the pulse anymore go a little bit higher and then really slowly come down and wait for that pulse to return. Now, and you're letting off the valve right here? Yeah, yep. letting off the valve in my hand there. And there's that pulse come back. Now you can, you can see the needle um, pulsating. Now don't be tricked by that. That is not what you're looking for. You're feeling for the pulse. So the needle will actually start moving before the pulse returns, um, just as your pulse is pushing on the cuff okay. and that's changing the pressure. So you can't use that. You have to wait for the pulse to return. And I've got it there at about 110. If you've come down too quickly and you've gone, oh, it's about there, you might go, you might um, it might go past the pulse because, you know, your pulse is only beating once every second. Mm. So you want to come down slowly, but if you get it wrong, just go back up. Just go, oh, it might have been a bit higher. And then slowly come down again. There it is, 110. So that's by palpation, and then you can obviously just um, release the valve and open it up. That's by palpation. Mm. To go deeper by auscultation, obviously, first of all, you want to make sure you've got your ears incorrectly. And your stethoscope, um, depending on which one you have, this one can either have the, um, that can twist around like that. So you can either have the bell or the diaphragm. So I want the diaphragm and I'm just gonna very gently tap it to make sure it's on the correct side so I can hear it. 
just pop it on the cube fossa there. Get yourself set up again so you're not tapping on that because that's mm. going to interfere with what okay. I hear. That's important. Same deal. Now, even if I hadn't palpated previously and I didn't know what the, um, the systolic was going to be, I'd be going up to about 60. Now, I know I'm not going to hear those coric cough sounds until I get to the diastolic pressure. So I slowly go up and now I'm hearing the coric cough sounds. So now I've partially occluded that artery. Mm -hmm. I want to keep pumping until they disappear and they've disappeared and I'm going to go a little bit higher. And again, I'm slowly coming down, waiting for the resumption of those coric cough sounds. And there they are, right there I'm hearing the sounds. Now, the first time I hear them, that is my systolic pressure. So um, right now I know the pressure in the cuff is just about equal to the pressure in the arteries at the systole. Slowly come down again until those coric coughs disappear. And there they are there. I can't hear them anymore and we're at 85. So that gives me my diastolic pressure. And again, deflate, take your ears out, cuff off. And that's the blood pressure question. Cool, yeah, so I noticed there was a slight difference mm -hmm. between the results of the, the, the palpation and auscultation. So mm -hmm. is there one that's usually more accurate or is it, yeah? Auscultation, basically, okay. yeah. So um, palpation, um, your A, you only get the systolic, so you don't get the diastolic, okay. um, but B, you're relying on that um, that palpatory sense. Okay. Whereas with um, auscultation, I'm hearing those coric cough sounds. Now they should be identical. Uh, yeah. because it's the same blood pressure, yeah. but you generally trust your ears over your uh, fingers on that. Okay, well, why do you do the both? Why do both? Mm. Oh, well, I guess the only reason to do both is because you want the diastolic. It is important to have the systolic and diastolic for a yeah. lot of different conditions, mm. but equally it's not that important for a lot of different conditions. So okay. if I just want a general checkup on my patient, I'm not worried about anything cardiac or anything like that. Right. I'm fine with the palpation just okay. to make sure everything's normal. All right. But um, for example, if there was um, the mean arterial pressure, so between those two, if um, there was a very small or a very large um, gap between them, I'm worried. If someone's got a very low blood pressure or a very high blood pressure, okay. I want to know the diastolic as well. Right. But for anyone who I expect to be in the normal range and is in the normal range, I'm fine with just the diastolic. Okay. No, sorry, with just palpation, sorry. Just palpation, okay. My other question, as you were doing it, it's quite tight, but you know, but do you ever get patients that kind of stress out about the taking this and you need to... Yeah, can yeah. happen and you can walk them through it. I suppose children is the main one, particularly very young. So under about four, just let them know it's going to get tight. It's like hugging your arm, but it'll only be for a second. Um, particularly if you're going to oscillate and normally you would oscillate on a child because it's much harder to palpate. Okay, yeah. You kind of need them to be quiet. Yep. So getting them screaming is not ideal. Um, so you want to sort of very slowly pump it up and always give them that out. Say, look, it's, it's not going to hurt you. It'll only be for a little bit. Um, it's just going to hug your arm tightly. Mm -hmm. But if you want it to stop, you say stop and I twist my lever and it stops instantly. And then okay. you can often be quick enough to get one in before the kids start screaming at you. Right. <laughs> that's important. Yeah, it yeah. is. Yeah, yeah, great. I think that's, that's excellent, really. Thanks, Simon, for going through that in depth. It really helped me understand not just what to do, but why you're doing what you're doing. So no thanks. And I hope that was helpful for you. Thanks for watching.